Hi, how are you? This is Dr. Damaris Maria Grossman, and this is the Mindfully Integrative Show. And today we have an amazing mindful chat with Claire Kui. She is, oh my gosh, she has an empowering coach. She has done the queen of international sales expert. She's kind of done so much for her other people, but she's also helped with seven-figure sales business for her teams. She's experienced in many areas of consulting. She also is like really into trying to get people that are struggling as yoga coaches, but I think even more than that, helping people understand their self-worth. And that is just so empowering to me because I think people are, you know, don't know what their self-worth is and kind of getting them to their best potential. So thank you so much, Claire, for being on the show and kind of talking a little bit about your story. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Yes. That's a beautiful introduction. I'm really, um, I have to say, I'm like, just hearing that sometimes we forget where we've been. And I'm just imagining some of your audience probably, I don't know, any of you that are struggling with your, your self-worth, your confidence is a lot of what I support clients with, specifically with their businesses and, and really charging what they're worth, um, being able to, to have that confidence to talk about what they do. And I think it all really boils down, if I were to say, um, in my, my specific niche, it boils down to confidence and self-leadership. But I think that is universal for, for most of us. If we're feeling yeah. overwhelmed or we're, we feel like we're struggling or we feel like we just aren't confident, um, at, the, at the heart of what I've done with seven-figure businesses and solopreneurs, that's really the heart of it is your confidence, your leadership, and really valuing yourself. That's so important. I mean, I know that there's a a money component, but really that comes down to like really understanding who you are as a person. And, and I think that how that integrates with health is that like, if you're not able to kind of get into your own voice and who you are, you can't really be successful, whatever that is, whether it's money, life, love, whatever. Right. And I, I think one of my favorite sayings is um, it's pretty simple. And, and I think that's also the theme for, for business. But there's really two things you have to do is talk about what you do and sell what you do. And I mean, that's really honestly, that's at the, at the heart of business. That's, that's all it is. But strangely enough, I think women specifically also really struggle with that because um, we're often told to, to be a good girl. Don't, you know, be quiet. You're supposed to be seen and not heard. I mean, that's so if you have if you're struggling with with if or if you've never been told that then building a business or anything even close to to building strong relationships that's going to be a challenge if you, if you don't really have the words to talk about your needs and talk about um, your desires and then selling what you do I mean you're going to have a really hard time if you're if you've been told that you're not good enough or you didn't get the great grade or, you know, they, they're so much prettier than you, or, you know, you're not pretty enough, then you're going to have a hard time selling what you do. And, and I'm not, I say sales. I mean, you don't have to be in business to be in the, in the business of selling yourself. Like if you're dating and you're selling yeah. yourself. You it, this is, it's totally relevant for many areas. Like if you don't have that self-worth, like you cannot get beyond. Right. Right. We, we just, we can't. So uh, at the core of it doesn't really matter if you are, you know, seven figure business or you just got, you know, seven cents in your bank account. <laughs> yeah. Right. It doesn't, doesn't really matter um, if you don't have those pieces. And I, I really think of it as a spectrum of where, where we're at in our journey. And some of us aren't on the journey of having a business and that doesn't really matter. That's totally fine. Um, but I do see our, our healing journey as a spectrum and where we're at. Yeah. I mean, it, it can, it, it kind of comes into play of like healing, whether like, yeah, whether it's in your, your financial health or, but your overall health. And, and then it's even proven through science that to be successful in any area, if you're not looking at the underlying causes of something, or you're not looking at your self-worth of where you're at, like you got to have some self-love and how do you, um, what made you kind of realize that that was important for you? That's, that's my first question. Oh yeah. I mean, I love that you're just also saying the, the underlying causes. I think um, I mean, it's a, it's a big part of my life. And, um, as I, as a provider in general, I want to get to an underlying and I just have learned over time that if we don't understand like the real stuff, you know, it just gets, we get stuck Right. I'm myself included. My, I am not in any way perfect. 
Right. And one of the things that I think is has been really beneficial, um, I, I love different modalities. I'm, I'm sure you tap into different ways of how we can heal ourselves. Um, one of my go-tos are one, um, astrology, cool. uh, not, not just like, in, I, I think people think astrology and they think of, um, let's look at the newspaper. I don't know if who looks at the newspaper anymore, but I used to like, look at the newspaper <laughs> oh, you're talking about like, um, like tour, like the, um, the different, like, like Libra, Zodiac, Scorpio, right. the, Zodiac, Zodiac. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, but, um, there's, it's, it's actually much more, uh, it's more, more depth to that. Carl Jung, in fact, you know, major psychology, um, uh, I would say guru, uh, based a lot of his psychological findings around astrology. Um, so for me, looking at the underlying causes, and, and I also am on a, a gut healing, hormone healing journey, and all of this is like really, what's the underlying cause? And underlying body, cause. mind, spirit, it's all kind of connected. How we do one thing, it's how My we passion. do thing. Right, <laughs> right. It's like, if you're here to, you're, that's your message, right? And um, I, I think underlying causes, like how we got here, I, I, I love referring to astrology, also human design is also something that's been really beautiful in my life. And if we, because we can't really diagnose, we can't diagnose whatever our situation is right now without seeing how we got here first. And I'm not saying that we have to dwell in that past, like we don't have to go there. I mean, I was even listening to the, just another podcast or something but the traditional model of um and it was around this is going to sound so strange the satanic panic one of the things that they would do is like get get survivors to talk about and relive their trauma and i, I think i think we've changed that model i hope we've changed that model now i've it's been a while it's been in, in conventional therapy but um it is, it is important for us to see our conditioning, to see how we got here without necessarily reliving it or like getting stuck, I call it getting stuck in the mud. Like we can, we can see where we're, we, how we got to where we're at based on our history. I mean, all that's important. If we were to even right. go into, to a, a DNP, like you're going to look at what somebody's history is. It's just important. Right. To yeah. Like, Exactly. I mean, whether you don't have to diagnose to like, I, even, and I hate the word, even, I don't even want to diagnose because it like, it doesn't really still get to the real thing. Right. It's just a oh word, right? It's just like, it's like, all right, if I put, if I label someone that it's like, then I've just ruined the the whole right. thing. Then that's what they think they have. And you're like, no, exactly. that's so not it. <laughs> right. I think also back in, in the, the phase of my life where I was dating, I was diagnosed and I just used my bunny yeah. fingers like yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as being anxious attached. And while that is, I do think that there are there. And I guess I say this very delicately because I'm aware that some people out there might have been told that this is their circumstance or this is the label. And it, it kind of becomes like a personality trait. Like you totally. don't have to. I think that's the, that's the delicate balance of when, uh, we, uh, professionals diagnose people, oftentimes it creates this attachment because we, as humans love to know what we are, we love, like, that's why most people are, are attracted to things like the Enneagram to Myers-Briggs. Like we love to be categorized. So it's how we create safety in ourselves, but. Oh, totally. I have to even. I literally have to do that sometimes for patients and you go to them and it's like, they almost want to feel better that they have that as an right. idea. And it's, I sometimes use it as the opposite to just get an idea of where they think they may be. So, right. um, I use a Myers-Briggs literally to just have the conversation of like, what's going on. Like, right. And we're I, like, Hey, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be that. And, right. uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. No, I love that. And I think even too, let's just look at, look at, um, uh, also there's some really interesting, like just discoveries on the Myers-Briggs and how it was created. I don't know if you've like delved into that recently, but, um, most people, uh, well, yeah, like, so, oh, I'm an extrovert. I'm an extrovert. Right, oh, right, I'm right. an introvert. I'm an introvert. I can't do X, Y, Z. Can't do X, Y, Z. Right. Okay. It, it becomes like armor. That's like the best way to describe oh, really? it. Like it makes it, 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 um, get, it gives people a way to arm themselves and, and not do something. And, Right. Not just something they don't like 
or that they it, it's like a protective we'll only do. blanket we'll only do right or only do like one or the other I seriously believe I had this conversation with my husband the other day because he says I'm an introvert he goes to me you're an extrovert and I said I don't think we're both just I, that babe I, I was like if that was the case I would not have done even half of the stuff that I've done totally with you know, if right. I was only extrovert and he goes, Oh, right. okay. And I go, if you were just an introvert, we would have, but we go back and forth about this, but you're right. He immediately goes, well, I can only do this and I have to be in my bubble. And I'm, I'm right. thinking about what you're saying. You're, we immediately put this label on this thought of our health, whether it's a health conversation or the psychological, this is psychological health and, and our labeling of what we are. Why does it have to be that, you know? Right. And so how, so you help people overcome some of these conversations. Right. I mean, that's essentially so important. Um, important because uh, if we are overly attached to our label, it's kind of, it's the exact same thing as being stuck in a comfort zone and transformation. I don't care if it's your health. I don't care if it's relationship. I don't care if it's business transformation change does not happen in the comfort zone. So if you, oh, identify, no. oh, right, right, if you, if you identify as an introvert and you're like, well, I can't just, I just can't go out. I can't, you know, I'm really not supposed to go and interact with other people. And I just going to stay here with my plants, my cat, which is totally fine. And you have to ask yourself what that's limiting yourself to when it comes to getting the things that you want. And I'm not saying that you can't stay at home with a cat and plants and be totally happy. That's not the saying that at all. And, you know, what if you did want something more? What if you did, then it's, you're going to have a really hard time, um, expanding beyond that because you're attached to a label and I, I, I could say this for any, you can. any method that we use to diagnose ourselves. I'll say the same thing. And I love astrology and looking at natal charts. I love human design. They're not the end all be all because the one thing that will always, I hate to say this word, it just seems so it's not my Trump. Everything else mm -hmm. will be your, all of that is up to your own personal experience and your interpretation of what's going on. And that, it, that bottom line. No, I totally agree. It makes sense because you're, you're, um, and then also how you're going to react to it, right? Like what right. your reaction. So like you may have an interpretation, like I know for myself and like I said, a progress that, um, I had a diagnosis of PTSD, like, or I had previous diagnoses, right? Mm -hmm. And then I, if I made those my story all the time and I said, I'm never going to grow from them. Right. Um, I think it's that at like, where do you get beyond, like, you know, how do you get beyond those thought process? So like the, I think it's important to have the labels in some aspects, but then also like, where are you going with it? You know, right. Or where, where are you not going? Like, oh my God, what is it making? Why is it making you frozen? Like, cause holy cow. Right. I think this is also, so what I'm like, what I just want to repeat what you're saying is I think this is an important concept. It's important to have a label like it's important to know like like again looking at history or like oh wow there's I, I think what it provides is a sense of um belonging like oh there's other people this is a diagnosis that means other people had ptsd okay? right, right and i just i think a great um analogy would be with relationship it's helpful to label yourself as monogamous with somebody right mm -hmm. like we're a couple yeah. we're monogamous like there's safety, there's, um, there's connection, there's intimacy when you establish the diagnosis that I'm, we are monogamous, we're a monogamous couple. But I think where this is also where in relationship, I see people get comfortable, too comfortable, they don't date anymore, they, they have the label, so they don't actually, they're not actually present and connected to what is. Because mm -hmm. just because it's a label, doesn't mean that your your intimacy your communication and everything is healthy so i think this is also where we can get attached to a label of ptsd for me like anxious like it was anxious yeah. attachment an anxious in general yeah it doesn't really give us the tools to no. be present with that so i think that's the interesting thing it's like understanding it but not making it this hard, fast rule where this is the only truth that's possible for me. Yeah. I think what it does is it, um, one, you're not present, like you stated Two, it comes out to being, um, you get, can get frozen or, or caught up in it. And then three, you're not even making an actionable step to change where you're at. So then it's like almost staying on easy mode. Like you said, the comfort. So it's like comfort's good, but then when is it 
do you need to go a little bit more or when do you need to go back? So um, I think it's a lot of that identification of like, and being okay where you are like now. And if you aren't, then how do you change that? You know? And I think that sometimes it's difficult to be there. And I think when I even just generally talk to people about like a basic, like, Hey, let's drink some water today. All right. Why are you not drinking? Like, I, I mean, like, I'm just talking like the simplest thing right now. Like, okay, let's drink some water today. Hey, why do you think you don't want to drink water? Is there a reason why? Is it because that you're tired? You know, like, so then trying to identify like thought of why is the habit not happening? Like, what is it that's making someone right. like, and it's like, oh, wait, um, I didn't have a water bottle. Oh, my child or, or my loved one was, you know, distracting me or what I've heard it all. Right. I'm just I'm talking about water. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I and think- yeah, right. I think what you're also referring to is a simple thing that is, I mean, yogis and the the gurus of old have been doing and been talking about for millennia, which is just cultivating presence, cultivating presence and awareness. I mean, that's the, at, at the end of the day, that's the only thing that really matters because um, if you're not conscious or aware and you're constantly numbing, distracting, uh, avoiding I mean, that's, if we're just to dumb it down, like that's really the goal. If if we're aware and if we are aware and present to, oh, why am I not drinking water? Like, what does this feel like in my body? You know, like, exactly. (laughs) My mouth dry. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Then if we can't, we don't even have simple practices to cultivate awareness and be in our bodies, then it's going to be hard. I mean, to, to do simple things like get a healthy amount of water in our bodies. So, I think it's again like a spectrum. If we don't have awareness, even in our, our our own health, I think that's a primary thing people struggle with. Like it's one of the first things we notice when something's wrong. Um, but yeah, cultivating awareness, and that's important that they have support in that because most people don't actually know how to cultivate awareness. Yeah, no, no, that that is a whole other conversation. <laughs> that right, probably so totally. Have. Yeah, but no, it's important. I mean, they're so important, you know, and that you know the amount of individuals that you're empowering, but then like your story, you know, of, you know, it probably is even more complex than what you're even discussing with me today. But, you know, now you've taken it to another level of like, okay, it's, it's a business mindset, but the business mindset still is trying to figure out how people can be um, more aware of what they're doing and what's going on. Um, I mean, right. that makes, it makes a lot of sense. What is your astrology? Um, what do you like with, what's your, what's your astrology, like things that you like to do? Oh, I love looking at charts. Um, and so there's one thing that is um, really amazing about astrology is that and anybody's chart, like you could say, I'm a set, for example, I'm a Sagittarius. You could be like, oh, I'm a Sagittarius too. And they're where our planets are and where, where the, the planets, the stars, even the sun is when the moment we're born, it's just incredible how much it can say about us. And so if you're also one of those people that, you know, I don't really relate to my sun sign, my, my astrological sign. So Mm -hmm. you walk into a bar and like, I'm a Leo. If you don't relate to that, that tells me personally, actually you're a lot about your fear responses, Mm -hmm. a lot about how you were, your relationship with your mother. It tells me a lot about your relationship with your family. Again, and these are all underlying causes. So, so from not just like a, like a medical Right. Yeah. No, just medical. You're taking it to another level that's beyond. Um, there is a lot of science that um, talks a lot in the expansiveness and astrology is in that area of energetic right. and, and um, it's, it's a lot very complex and you're definitely part of that conversation yeah. and the, you, you can't, it, they're all interconnected. <laughs> they're all interconnected. They yeah. are so interconnected and it's, it's complex, but it, you're probably just getting, getting to just, the bear like that first layer for someone right and and as long as we you know I think also that I love what you said the first layer because sometimes it's just like crack you know getting the egg when a chick hatches it's not getting getting the out of the egg is like relatively easy it's getting the first penetration out of the egg so that's like the hardest part is like pecking your way out of it so I look at astrology and uh, also human design, which is basically how, how your unique machine works. So if you're feeling exhausted, burnt out, things aren't clicking, you're doing all quote unquote, all the right things, nothing's working. 
human design has major aspects of astrology and it's I think of astrology really as your conditioning like you look at well why do I think this like why where did I get this from astrology you can look directly at astrology at and see how you got there and then what I love about human design slightly different a lot of uh, uh, unique aspects of astrology are in human design but the human design for me what I've learned is it teaches it shows you how to work with your conditioning or you know move past your conditioning and move through your conditioning to really get more on purpose to get more clarity things are easier when you learn how your machine works so um I could talk all day about those too but. Uh, so that I can imagine I, what is your with human design um have you found like you can kind of identify people pretty quickly as soon yeah. as you complete them? The, the chart is actually very complex, but I um, I'm almost, I yeah. I'm not as familiar with it, but. If you see it, it's very complex. Um, mm -hmm. And there's like a lot of, there's centers, there's how you, that's how you operate, there's types, there's different. And so it's, I'm, I'm starting to get like a better grasp on how to read those. And probably by the end of the year, I'll be able to really read somebody's chart and use all these tools to make essentially your life easier for things to, for you to have more ease, more peace and really work um, with your intuition a little bit. Yeah, no, I mean, it's so important because I think we don't, we don't listen with them, you know? Oh no. <laughs> you know, or, or when we do have that voice coming out, um, the conversation is just kind of blocked. We don't, we right. had, or we sabotage it sometimes. I mean, totally. I'm also a part of that and I don't always know why, but it happens. Uh, right. But you know, it's a work in progress, right? <laughs> we all are. We all, but yeah, we all are. Believe me, I would not, I would not have um, considered myself even five years ago, an intuitive person when in fact I am actually deeply intuitive. So that's again, all our conditioning we're taught yeah. and what society deems as safe, et cetera. So there's a lot to really look at. Um, you should be so proud of how, how far you've come and how much you've done for yourself and for others. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I, 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 I look back at where I was and I have to say it's, it's possible. We all, we all, it's not just for me, like success and all of that is not just reserved for one person. Like Oprah doesn't have the monopoly on it. Like it's all actually there for us. There's enough, there's, there abundance is meant for everybody. We just get to get the right tools and get the right support in order to have, you know, our birthright. And I believe everybody deserves to have what they want. Oh, that's so important. Oh, I love that. Um, before we go, um, would you like to leave? I love that. I was going to say we could leave on that thought, but do you have any, any other thoughts that you'd like to leave the audience before you go? Yeah, I think the last, I mean, just to tap into my intuition. I think the message that's coming to me for your audience is just to really trust. That's, that's the thing that's coming up, up, up for me to say to whoever's listening is to trust yourself that your wisdom, your choices, um, all of all of it is divinely meant for you. And the more you trust yourself versus what you think you should do versus what you've been told to do, the more you can trust yourself, that's actually where your um, your destiny is, is just trusting yourself. So wishing that for everybody. Love it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate um, those thoughts. I, uh, as I sit trying to trust my own self thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, we all are. We're all trying to trust ourselves <laughs> on a, a deeper level for sure. Yeah. We all are. So, um, I'm going to have all the information in the show notes for those to reach you, but how can they reach you directly? Um, yeah, they can follow me at my Instagram handle, which is Claire C L A R E underscore C U I. C U I. Um, that's my Instagram and I'm playing with a new TikTok. It's that one healing girl on TikTok. Oh, I love that so, name. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to follow you up. Yeah. yeah. So I'm new in the journey. TikTok world, but I'm getting there, getting more. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. It's just like, it's <laughs> junk food for the brain. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> a little extra. So I, again, I appreciate you being on. I look forward to us chatting again in the future and those listening make sure you find a mindful way each and every day.